Hi, I'm Martin, and this is Not Enough Tech. Are you tired of babysitting your printer? Hi, I'm Martin, and this is Not Enough Tech. Are you tired of babysitting your printer? There are better things to do than babysit one. Since I'm moving my to garage because of noise concerns, I figure out, well, I'm gonna use Octoprint. But I didn't want to just open the computer and start the computer, uh, making sure everything is fine and monitor the progress. I wanted to have an ability to check on the print on the go. And that's the project. Today, we're gonna talk about monitoring your print from a mobile and getting status notifications to your Android device. Okay, let's run this. Upload, clicking, loading G-code, selecting the file. So, how does it work? Uh, obviously, you can use Octoprint to get the same details. I'm getting these details to uh, mobile notifications via Octoprint. So, if you don't care for mobile notifications, this is not a tutorial for you. This is all about sending that information from Octoprint to a mobile device and enabling you to have a couple of useful commands like pausing, cancelling or looking up your live stream from the camera. Now, how does it work? I'm running a Node-RED server anyway, and I've used that as a relay between Octoprint and my mobile device. I'm connecting to Octoprint using HTTP request and MQTT as well. And then I use that information to send it over and generate um, notifications using Tasker. Now, in theory, you could use Node-RED and the same profile on the Raspberry Pi that currently is running Octoprint, However, I would strongly recommend you to keep it separate for the sake of the prints because you want uh, your Raspberry Pi to focus on printing. Now, there is a couple of things that I'm still going to be adding to uh, my printer and that includes better lighting because I'm going to be printing in the dark so I want to have a LED to highlight the print and I'm also going to have a 180 degree time-lapse jig so there is going to be a moving camera monitoring the print from different angles because a flat angle on a 3D object simply is not going to work. So that's something I'm gonna uh, cover in uh, further videos. Now this video is slightly different to my previous videos when I explain step by step what I've done. And when you see the node red flow, you'll understand why. Welcome to the node red part, and you're not going to enjoy it because there is a lot of talk. If it looks complicated, it is complicated. I don't expect you to understand everything, but I want to explain what uh, it is how it works and how to troubleshoot should you need it. So first of all, I don't need this. I've used it, it's okay, it's working, I don't need this, that was only for the debug options. Now, the way it works, I've used a couple of dependencies I've talked about previously, so there is a fair share of reading to do. Um, first of all, uh, on and off and uh, power calculations are done by Sonoff POWR2. And that sort of device basically allows you to switch on and off the printer when required and measure how much power it's going to use throughout the duration of the print. So it will give you an estimate money, it supports two different tariffs, night tariff and the day tariff, you can configure that and it will add that to an overall cost of the print. Now, in the Node-RED, you're also going to see me just pulling some resources from the Node-RED itself. 
and those are the credentials I've saved to file and I pass it on from a JSON. I've set it as a local variable. So if you want to know how I received some of the information, you can read about serving credentials with Node-RED. Now, the main article is going to be perfect notifications. Perfect notifications is the way of sending a JSON string from Node-RED to Tasker and that string will create a notification based on what did you include in that string. So it's slightly modified for the purpose of the 3D printer. However, as you can see on the screen, that's basically what it is you can uh, read about this. Obviously, I'm going to be linking everything. Uh, lastly, I'm using Ender 3D printer. Uh, I've mentioned before what options they're going to be like and gave you some previews. I've modified it since. And if you want to end the 3 print and read more about it, what I think and watch the build because I've built it online as well. There's a video about it. Uh, then head to this article and that's going to be linked in the description too. Lastly, I'm using uh, this camera and this is a C3 Cam CU30. It's a really, really good camera. It's slightly on the more expensive um, side. However, it has a very good low um, light performance. So it's something I'm looking forward to testing in the darkness with some LED lights. So I'm gonna link that as well, should you um, wish to get one of these for your Octopi print. Now with that all said, let's jump into the node red and talk about this monstrosity. Now, first of all, there are some settings. I've mentioned before, that's not needed. I've mentioned before that there's a couple of things that you can do. So, uh, you can pick your filament. There's a six type of different filaments in here and you can simply select and that's going to be your default filament for all the prints. So if you're changing a filament, you have to just open it up. Uh, you can write the interface. It's going to be stored as a variable. Now, another thing that you have to uh, set is the phone you're going to send it to. So uh, it's just going to ask you for the auto remote um, key. It's going to be explained probably later on as well. Another thing you can uh, do is to basically define your tariff. If you have a day tariff and you have a night tariff, you can define the uh, prices for kilowatt uh, hour, call it kilowatt hour, and then what time they start and stop. This is important if you want to get uh, accurate calculations. Uh, lastly, uh, there are some things that we can do in terms of uh, price uh, of the filament. So I've paid 17 pounds for 1000 gram filament spool. If you modify those two items, topic and payload, you can have a half a kilo spool, etc. It will calculate the cost of filament based on the length of the filament um, used. And lastly, uh, setting just the diameter of the filament uh, if I wanted to do it manually, but this is all done uh, through um, set density options. So basically in a set density, I check what uh, filaments have been done and apply everything. All right, so we've got the settings covered. Let's uh, jump into the flow itself. As you can see, there's a couple of things that are in here and it looks really complicated, but the only thing that stood out is this fragment. Now, this fragment is the key. Uh, what happens is basically I'm looking at the MQTT uh, because you have to actually go to, let's, let's go Octop Octoprint you'll have to go to settings and install MQTT add-on. So if you go to settings, to plugins, uh, I already added, if you go to plugin manager, you can add MQTT add-on. So install this and um, you will be able to receive MQTT messages to your node red. Okay, so based on events uh, like uh, you just open it. So I have firmware loaded, so that's on the connection. Uh, added file, file selected, file removed, print started, printing, print post, print resume, print cancel, and print done. So those are events I'm expecting to have during the, oops, uh, during the print. And these events gonna have different actions. So each time something happens, the printer uh, goes to a new status, I process this event and display appropriate message on the phone. Now. Uh, in here, I monitor the temperature and this is in the preheat stage. So every 30 seconds, uh, I check the temperature of the bed and the extruder 
pass it over and to display that in a preheat message that has been uh, available on the showcase. And that is uh, enabled by uh, this flow. And if the printing actually starts, this flow is interrupted and this message is no longer um, displayed and it's being replaced by the regular print update. Now, print update, uh, it uses another topic, which is uh, basically uh, printing. And in the same, it's being enabled when the print starts. So when the percentage of the prints is greater than one, and it sends every 30 seconds or every 1%, depending on what's uh, shorter, uh, what's longer, sorry. Um, it will send a status update of your print, including uh, querying, HTTP querying, querying the details from uh, the Octoprint. And the details that I'm going to re uh, receive is uh, usually just uh, uh, duration, uh, left, uh, etc. Now, there is a couple of uh, things that I've done in here that's basically, this is a check whether I've set all the variables. If the, some of the variables are missing, you're gonna get a special notification in here asking you to um, set these parameters so you would calculate everything and it won't start printing until you do. So there's a couple of safeguards in here. Now this flow in here, this is responsible for calculating the power you saw. Once you start printing every minute it will check the print and it will go and see how much energy has been used and will add that to an array and the end of the print everything is being calculated and sent over uh, for the final notification. Obviously mid print I have uh, some uh, options that I can do from the notification itself. I can open the live stream, I can uh, pause the print which is here, I can uh, resume the print and all is basically uh, done from uh, this section. Now there's another two things that I've done uh, to control the printer. I turn on and off the printer when it's not needed. Only in the stage of printing, the printing is actually is on, which means the Octopi isn't linked directly to the power supply uh, from the printer. I'm gonna link the Octopi to a separate power supply because I don't want the printer to be on. That's my design choice, basically. Now, if the print is canceled, it will cancel all the notifications existing because the, while the print is in progress, the notification is persistent. Now, in here, uh, you have commands that uh, uses post endpoints, and basically you can pause, resume, or cancel, and those are HTTP commands being sent to a printer directly. Uh, and lastly, this is another loop which is very similar to this one, and it basically just gets some data about the print. So in this, before you start printing, it'll give you the information about how much filament you need and uh, what the ATA is. All right, so now that you've got everything, let's uh, get into a couple of things I want to discuss. First of all, I want to talk about how things are being sent to the mobile. So I'm using Auto Remote, and since Auto Remote uh, supports HTTP requests, I'm passing HTTP request with the JSON object. So uh, let's go into like one of the messages in here. So what you're gonna see in here that I'm sending a key, uh, I'm sending URL and command that's gonna start uh, be identified in a tasker. Now there's a couple of things that I have to monitor in between, but the general idea is that in this section before the body, I compile the variables that's gonna basically display some text. And as you can see, there's some print that the ATA is, and there is a time and print etc etc et and that all goes into this massive json file this json file basically it's very similar in each case all the variables just gonna change um, and at the mo at the bottom i just stringify everything and encode that uh, to be able to pass it as a url so this is how you communicate with um, mobile phone running tasker and auto notification now, a couple of interesting things I've done was to calculate the um, information. So, I wanted to know how much power I'm using. Now, the problem with the power essentially was if I was on a single tariff, that wouldn't be a problem because the, the tariff doesn't change. But because I wanted to use a separate tariff for day and separate tariff for night, and I wanted for you to have ability to actually start the print during the day and finish at night and still report accurate value. 
that kind of started to complicate stuff. I thought about calculating the time to tariff change and then after change and etc etc but that would be very complicated however there was a very easy process so you could do basically check how much it costed you to print uh, for the last minute and just keep adding minutes and that way even if the tariff changes your inaccuracy is less than one minute which is I think a margin error I'm happy with so to calculate filament we have this and that looks really complicated however a filament is a cylinder so knowing how long is the cylinder and knowing how dense is the cylinder to cylinder I can actually um, get a weight of a filament used and if we know the weight of the filament used we can simply by proportions um, establish how much it would cost me to use that much of a filament and this is done in here um, they've got some currency so you can set as well I forgot to mention that and that's being sent to as a message so those are two main calculations that I really really have to had to do now everything else basically uh, you probably have to uh, figure out yourself otherwise I'm gonna be talking about it forever I gave you kind of an estimate to what where it is you'll see that um, this one's turn off and uh, printer I also included additional printer straight so when you use the button it will uh, adjust the flow accordingly and it won't populate your uh, notifications on the mobile um, and I think I've talked about everything there's a small debug um, option that I use to check all the values so if I'm gonna delete everything from here uh, I can always look what variables has been um, uh, set all right guys thanks so much for watching and bearing with me i know this is a lot and i do realize it will be complicated if you just want to replicate it in your own way thankfully everything is explained in the article as well and there are some files for you to download patreon supporters have a three-day exclusive access so uh, if you want your hands on now consider supporting me through patreon as for now guys uh, thank you so much for watching and follow me on social media if you're interested in uh, coming up uh, upgrades including the 180 degree uh, time-lapse trick and some lighting. As for now, take care.